Peace out, Periscope. What's up, Facebook? I'm sitting up here fixing my phone so we can get Periscope going. All right. Prophet David Taylor here for your weekly live prophetic word. Now, I want to tell you that <clears throat> whenever the prophetic word goes forth on a regular basis, God is talking to you uh, based on what he wants you to hear, what you need to hear for the day, for the week, and in your life, which is why you need to have a regular intake, a regular flow of the prophetic. Okay? Because remember, I told you there's three levels of word. There's the written word of God, the Bible. There's the living word of God, the logos of Jesus the Christ. But then there's the rhema word of God, the fresh breathe word of God, the right now word of God, proceeding out of the Lord's mouth. You need all three to get the fullness of what God wants you to have, just like you need all five gifts, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. You cannot get everything in this life that God wants you to have out of one of those offices or two of those offices, you must uh, uh, receive the teaching of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to get the fullness of what God wants you to have. So again, when there's a prophetic word going forth, receive it and grab it by faith because when the prophetic word comes forth, there's going to be signs and miracles following. So I declare and decree and I release unto you that as you receive this word today, there's going to be signs and miracles following this word and following your life if you believe it and receive it. Okay, so let's go into a word of prayer <clears throat> and then we'll dive into today's prophetic word. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you, Father, for Jesus. Thank you for your matchless grace. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit, oh God. Uh, please fill me with the Holy Ghost. Take over, oh God. I surrender my mouth, my hand gestures my lips, my teeth, my tongue, everything to you, God, and use me as your vessel and let your word come through me the way you want it to be released, oh God, that you might be glorified in all things and that your, your body might be fed with the good word of God, with the anointed word of God, with the rainbow word of God, and with signs and miracles following, oh God, that today it manifests today with no more delay. And they feel a life change as soon as they receive the prophetic word of God. I thank you for it and I believe you for it. And we are looking forward to what you have to say. And so in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I will repeat that signs and wonders and miracles follow the prophetic word. So if you receive the word that I'm about to release, you will get a sign and a wonder and a miracle today because God avenges us speedily. It ain't going to take no long time, okay? But you've got to receive it and believe it and start confessing it. And when you do, the signs and wonders and miracles are going to manifest from this word. So expect it. Okay, now today's prophetic word is testing. Today's prophetic word is testing, and we're going to look at a couple of scriptures. That's why, whenever I prophesy, I also teach so you can see where it is in the Bible and where you can also look it up for yourself. I'm going to say this little bit, then we're going to dive into the word. Just as in the natural, you have to feed your body every day, unless, of course, you're fasting. If you're fasting, that's different. But fasting is a temporary thing. You can only go, you can go longer without food than you can without water. But you can only go without them for a time. Okay, then you have to eat and drink again. So just like you have to feed your physical body, okay, you have to feed your spiritual body, but your spiritual body is not the same as your physical body. It's my physical body I'm touching right now. My spirit man is right there. Put your hand in front of your face and do this. You feel that? <coughs> Excuse me. That's the breath of life inside of you. Okay? That's your spirit man. Okay? Your spirit man has a different kind of food than your natural man. In the natural, we need protein. We need fish. We need bananas. We need uh, peanuts. We need salad. Uh, we need raisins. We need burgers. Whatever you're into, that's the physical man. The spiritual man needs the word of God. The spiritual man needs the anointing of God. The spiritual man needs the glory of God. That's what feeds that inner man, and that's what makes that inner man strong or not. So just like you can't eat one meal a week in the natural <clears throat> and not have consequences, you will feel yourself lose weight, but you'll also be emaciated. Your muscle mass will begin to dry up. You won't be able to think straight. All kinds of bad things happen when you are malnourished. Your skin changes. Your nails change. 
when you are malnourished. You understand that in the natural, don't you? Well, you can't listen to the Word of God just once a week and get everything that you need to get, okay? You got to talk to God every day. So when we release this word on Sunday, eat this word, but eat it every day, okay? Uh, I watch videos from other teachers and pastors every day. Watch this video every day and just this word every day and wherever else you listen to because you've got to feed that inner man every day, okay? Okay, so let's jump into today's word. <clears throat> Today's prophetic word is testing. Today's prophetic word is testing. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear up a misconception, okay? And it's going to hammer home the point as to why you need to get behind the original language when you study the Bible. Because there are many words that are translated into English that don't mean only what it looks like in English, and sometimes it, they could be better translated. And I'm going to give you an example of that because the Bible was not written in English. English is a translation. The Bible was written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. We're going to start looking at Genesis 22, uh, chapter 22, verse 1. The book of Genesis is the first book in the Bible. We're going to look at chapter 22, verse 1. <clears throat> and it says, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, reading out the Brian Study Bible, it says, Sometime later, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Uh, English Standard Version, after these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. New Living Translation. Sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called, yes, he replied, here I am. Now, a lot of people have said that this verse conflicts with James 1 and 13. James 1 and 13 says this, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. English Standard Version, Let no one say, when he, when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. Okay? Uh, Berean literal Bible, let no one being tempted say, I am being tempted by God, for God is unable to be tempted by evils, and he himself tempts no one. So a lot of Bible critics have said that these two scriptures contradict. They say that how can the Bible say in Genesis 22 and 1 that sometime later God tempted Abraham? Because that's what it says uh, in the King James. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. But the translations I read to you are better translations. It says, sometimes later, God tested Abraham. God tested. Okay? So that word there, tested, in the Hebrew, you can look it up. It's in Strong's Concordance, 5254, Nasa. Nasa. And it means to test or to try, okay? When you look at that word tempted in uh, the Greek in James 1.13, that Greek word is pirazo, pirazo, uh, to try or to tempt or to test. And what that means is that uh, pirazo means to tempt in the negative sense. And what that means is that trying to pull you into evil. So what the Bible is telling you is that God will never try to pull you into evil because God himself has no desire to be pulled into evil. He cannot be tempted by evil. Neither does he tempt anyone to go into evil. So when you see the word testing or tempting in Genesis 22, 1, it's not talking about the Greek word parazo to try to pull you into evil, okay? It's talking about what we're going to talk about today in Psalm 66.10. Uh, and Psalm 66.10 says, For you, O God, have tested us. You have refined us like silver. Okay? That's Psalm 66.10. That word there is, in the Hebrew is bakon. Bakon. And it means to examine or try. So in other words, when God tests you, it's not to pull you into the evil, that's the devil, or your own lust. 
So if you're faced with a temptation and you're tempted to walk in the flesh, that's not God doing that to you. That's your own lust, your own, that's your own flesh and or the devil. But what God does is he tests us, he examines us, he tries us, okay? And I want to read Psalm 66, 6610 in a couple of translations. A Berean Study Bible, for you, O God, have tested us, you have refined us like silver. New Living Translation, you have tested us, O God, you have purified us like silver. King James Bible, for thou, O God, has proved us thou hast tried us as silver is tried okay so what's the point of all that because remember i told you there are always i always want to deliver practical points because we can read the scripture and we can hear a prophetic word but how do i apply it to my life okay and that's where the rhema word has to come in that's where the revelation of the holy ghost comes in because somebody looking at me right now you've been going through some things for a while and you don't quite understand what's happening you might be mad at God, you might be confused, you might not know what's going on, okay? What's been happening in your life is that you need to understand a little bit about metal, precious metals, like gold, silver, uh, copper, bronze, lead, nickel, you know, gold and silver are obviously uh, the more expensive and the more uh, precious, but they all kind of work the same way. They have different melting points, but the way that raw, metal ore works when you pull it from the ground it has some pure metal in it but it also has some unrefined or dirty elements or worthless elements in it as well so what they do is they heat up a crucible okay and a crucible is a pot that you heat up super 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 hot super hot you can't touch it uh you can't touch it because anything hot enough to melt metal will sear your skin it'll fry your hand they heat up uh heat up a crucible and then they put the raw ore into the crucible and then it melts. And then what happens is that those impure elements, those dirty elements, those worthy, uh, 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 worthless elements come floating to the top. And that's called dross, D-R-O-S-S. -S. That's called dross. I will look up the dictionary definition of that word so I can read that to you because I want you to understand I'm not making that up. Okay. Okay, now the word dross coming out of the dictionary means something regarded as worthless or rubbish, okay? It also means, and this is what I was talking about, foreign matter, dregs, or mineral waste, in particular scum formed on the surface of molten metal. Let me read that last part again. Dross, D-R-O-S-S, -S, means foreign matter, dregs, or mineral waste in particular scum formed on the surface of molten metal okay so what you need to understand if you are a child of god that what god is doing in your life when you're being tested is that he it, the heat from the crucible is not designed to pull you into sin and it's not designed to destroy you it's designed to make any impurity in your life bubble up to the top Anything that is waste, anything that is dregs, anything that is impure, anything in you that's worthless, what the heat of the crucible does is it makes that come to the top so God can skim that off the top and the precious metal will be left underneath because that's how they get refined gold and refined silver. So again, what does that mean in practical terms? It means that you've been feeling the heat and you've been feeling the pressure. And so what is produced in you is a greater hunger and thirst for God. So now, maybe you weren't that hungry and thirsty for righteousness before, but you are now because of the pressure. Maybe you didn't have a strong life, prayer life, or maybe you didn't have a consistent prayer life. But after all that heat and pressure come on, you learn how to pray every day. See, now you're faithful where before you were flaky. Now you are faithful. Before where you were all over the place, now you are consistent. Because God let that flakiness and that inconsistency get burned up by rising to the top and skimming it off because of the testing. You understand? And so, again, a lot of people, a lot of Christians don't understand why you've been going through everything you've been going through. The devil is the one trying to destroy you. The devil is the one stealing from you. 
But no matter what Satan brings in your life, according to Romans 8, 28, God is going to get a hold of it and he's going to work it together for your good. The devil is not going to destroy you. I came to release that to somebody that's looking at me right now. The devil is not going to destroy you. Satan's been telling you over and over and over again, you're going to lose your house, you're going to lose your mind, you're going to lose your kids, you're going to whatever little money you have left, you're going to lose your health. That's a lie. He's lying. That's what he does. I stopped by to release you, to release to you by the Holy Ghost that the devil's not going to destroy you, okay? But rather, even though all this heat and pressure is on you, God is going to use it to get all of the impurities in you out and teach you how to walk the way he wants you to walk, teach you how to have that pure heart, that pure life, teach you how to be precious metal. But here's why. What happens when we refine gold? And what happens when we refine silver? What's the next thing? The next thing is we turn it into precious things. We turn it into rings and, and earrings and necklaces. And King Solomon turned it into a throne. And the Lord's throne is made out of a pearl and made out of gold. And Solomon had gold lions on either side of his throne. And, and we, we turn it into things that are precious once we get that precious refined ore. And what God is trying to do in your life is get you ready to become a blessing, to take you to the next level where he can trust you because all that flakiness, all that inconsistency, all of that unbelief, and all of that walking in the flesh that you used to do has now been burned out of you. So even though the enemy or the circumstances might be bringing the pressure, God is using it to burn off the dross, burn off the waste, making it rise to the top. And some of y'all, for example, I'll give you another practical example. Some of y'all before the pandemic hit weren't that good with money. Then the pandemic hit and all of a sudden you had to learn how to stretch a dollar till it holler. <laughs> you, <laughs> you had to learn how to make a dollar out of 15 cents. You are now better with money now than you were back in March, three months ago. Just think about it. Think about it. Think about that if you weren't consistent in your prayer life before when this pandemic hit or when you got separated from your family, when you couldn't be around people, no more physical contact, you had all that time on your hands and all of a sudden you found God talking to you in the stillness and the quietness of that solitude. And now you have a more intimate relationship with God. He has revealed himself, but God never just reveals himself. God reveals himself and he reveals you. Think about it. You now have, because of this pandemic, even though it's been a lot of pressure, you now have a much clearer picture. If you've been listening to God through this whole thing since March, you now have a much clearer picture of who it is that you are. Not just who he is, but who it is that you are. Can you see that? Because God has used this pressure and this heat. It's a crucible. It's hot. And we don't like it. But he's used that to burn off your lack of self-identity. He's used that to burn off your confusion about who you are and what you're supposed to do. He's also used it to burn off your fear, including the fear of man. What do I mean by the fear of man? I mean, so many people are gonna come out of this so much bolder, so much bolder, with so much more confidence. Do you know why you're bolder and you have confidence now? Because God burned the fear out of you. He used the pressure and the heat of the crucible, the testing process, to burn that fear out of you. Now you don't care what people think. A few months ago, you was like, oh, Lord, what about the neighbors? Oh, Lord, they're going to talk about me. Oh, Lord, what are they going to say? And now you like, <laughs> now you don't bit more care what people think. Think about it. Think about it. The level of commitment you have to your God, to yourself, to your career, to your family, to your marriage is greater now than it was just three months ago. Think about it. Think about your level of appreciation. Think about no matter how much you may have loved your family and your friends before, think about how much you love them now. Think about how every interaction now with family and friends, with loved ones, is precious to us now. Before, we may have taken it for granted. I'm just going to hop a airplane. I'm going to do a Zoom chat. We're going to do a, a video call. We're going to do whatever. 
But now, after going through all this heat, after going through all this, this pressure and this testing, now, when you get around your family, now think about it. Every moment, every conversation, everything that you do now with your family is 10 times more precious to you now than it was just three or four months ago before the pandemic hit. Think about it. That's God burning that ingratitude. That's God burning out of us our, our tendency to take things for granted. Because as humans, we have a tendency to take things for granted, especially when things are going well. Okay? And in just a month, just in three to four weeks, all of the gains of the stock market from the last eight to 10 years were wiped out. Just wiped out. Just wiped out. All those gains, the crash of 2008, then the stock market rebounded, and we had back-to-back -back solid years of increase. And in just a few weeks, excuse me, all of those gains were just wiped out. Think about how much you appreciate your money now. Think about how much you appreciate your investments now. And think about how much you appreciate your time now. Do you know why you appreciate your time? Because people have been dying left and right. I just found out, if you follow me on Facebook, you'll see I just found out about the death of one of the greatest musicians in Chicago. Happened recently, and I didn't know. And then I found out, and we're all heartbroken. Because this man was just like the greatest guy. He wasn't just the best drummer. He was the best guy. He was one of those people to where you weren't ever sad when you were around him. He always brightened up the room and you never had anything bad to say. Nobody that knew him had anything bad to say because he wasn't just a great musician. He was a great guy and now he's dead. And sometimes every day on Facebook, I'm, I'm seeing more and more notices and we've been seeing that now for a couple months. Think about it. This June, which is the end of June, think about how we have been seeing more and more death notices over the last three months than we might have seen in the last three years. All of a sudden, what has that done? That has made us appreciate time. And you have realized you don't have no time to waste because you don't know how many days you have. Because nobody knows except the Lord. So that's what I mean when I say so. So the Spirit of God wanted me to release to the body to help you understand that you may have been confused about what's been going on. And the destruction and the temptation to do evil is Satan. That's him trying to steal, kill, and destroy. That's the devil. Okay? But God will use whatever's going on as a testing, as an examining, the same way that precious metal is put in the hot crucible so that the dross and the refuse and the waste can bubble up to the top, and then they skim that off, and you're left with the precious metal and then you turn it into beautiful things. And, and some of y'all looking at me right now, what you don't understand is that the thing that God has for you next in your life, it required that God get rid of all those things in you that were impure. For him to take you to the next level, for him to take you to the next thing that he had in line for you, God required out of his love and his wisdom that that stuff be burned out of you. Think about if you go into the next stage of blessing and you were still carrying all those character flaws and faults. So even though the devil meant it towards you, towards destruction and evil, God will take it and use it for good and help to burn off all this stuff that you have no use for, waste materials that have no business being in your life as a Christian so he can take you to the next thing. Okay, and so that's what the Spirit of God wanted me to let you know. That don't be afraid. And even if you've been confused, and even if you've been stressed, God is burning off the dross, the waste, the things that don't need to be there. And it's happened in my life. Remember, I always tell you, I'm not talking at you. I'm talking with you. I'm talking with you as a fellow believer. I'm talking with you as a fellow member of the body of Christ because I'm, I've been going through it too, okay? There's nothing that I'm, I'm releasing that don't apply to me too, okay? So that's what I mean when I say, be encouraged because the next thing, we're gonna get through this, but there's gonna be a next thing 
And when you get to the next thing, none of the stuff that you were carrying could go. You wouldn't be able to handle the next thing that God has for you if you didn't get rid of that old stuff. Okay? That's the prophetic word for many of you. So that's what I mean when I say, go back to the beginning of this video, listen to the whole video, and listen to it daily, along with other things. Not just me, you know, your pastor, uh, other prophets, other apostles, whatever you feel led, whoever has the word for where you need to build your faith. But you need to listen every day and get that faith built in that area. For example, if you need physical healing, you need to build faith for that physical healing. So you need to listen to people that are preaching faith healing. If you need money and you want to increase your finances, then you need to listen to people that preach about finances and increase. Uh, Pastor Creflo Dollar, uh, Marilyn Hickey, Joan Hunter, and Pastor Bill Winston have revelation on finances that will absolutely change your life. Pastor Bill Winston teaches about how the devil steals from Christians. And many times we don't even know that the devil's stealing from us. That's why when something goes down and, and maybe you're trying to move to the next level and all of a sudden the car breaks down, all of a sudden something busts in your house, that's the devil always trying to hurt your finances. See, that's what I mean. You've got to be feeding your inner man the same way you'd have a hot dog, some potato chips, a nice salad, a glass of lemonade. You don't have a problem with that. You don't have a problem with two, three, four meals a day. For this man, what about that man? The spiritual man, he's got to be fed every day too. Okay? All right, amen, and God bless you. Uh, two more things. Well, three more things. First thing is, when you see me close my eyes and pray in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost, is there anything else he wants me to release? So here we go. Okay, the word I got in the image I got there was river. River, and whenever there's a river, that means there's a flood. That means it's not a trickle, it's not a stream, it's a river. That means it's going to be a flood. For your enemies, that means it's going to be a flood of judgment. For you, those that love the Lord and fear the Lord, that means it's going to be a flood of blessing. I want you to remember that the same water that the children of Israel walked through on dry ground, God made that part, was the same water he brought back down on Pharaoh. That was a flood of judgment. But when they were in the wilderness, when they needed water, Moses could just speak to the rock. And water came out of a rock. Okay? So, for those of you that are the enemies of the Lord and the enemies of the saints, there's going to be a river of judgment showing up real soon. And for those of you that love the Lord and fear the Lord and serve the Lord, there's a river of blessing coming your way. Amen and amen. All right, that's thing one. Thing two is don't forget about my prophetic devotional and my hymns. I told you I have a lot of projects going on. I've got a quarterly prophetic devotional. A new one's getting ready to drop. Uh, I've got my 150 hymn project. Uh, so check out my hymns. I release a new hymn uh, every first Friday. So that's coming up this Friday. It's a fresh hymn for every psalm. So there's one hymn based on one of the psalms. And then, um, so always check that out. Then I got some more stuff coming up. I can't tell you about yet, but I'm working on it behind the scenes and I'm so excited. I can't make you understand. And then finally, um, I don't do uh, what I do for money, but I do because God has called me to do it. But uh, if, you, if my ministry is a blessing to you, then please consider sowing a financial gift. When you sow into my ministry, is going towards helping me write more books, more music, set up my project with the homeless, and a lot more things. So you'll be able to see the tangible results of your seed because I'm putting it towards the projects God has called me to do. So uh, you can sow through my Zelle, uh, prophetdavidtaylor.gmail.com, or you can sow through Cash App, and that's dollar sign, DMT, and then two capitalized, DMT2, but not the number two, DMT, and then two capitalized if you want to bless my ministry. All right? Thank you so much. God bless you. I, you hear me say it all the time. I, it's an honor and a privilege to be used of God. It's an honor and a privilege and a gift of the Holy Spirit to flow in the prophetic because it's not God don't owe us. It's gifts. He, gave, he gives gifts unto men. It's his will and his plan. That's why I give him all the glory. We give him all the glory. We take no credit for ourselves because it's not our ideas. 
but it's just such an honor and, and it's just so joyful. I'm just glad to, uh, to be used of God in this way. So praise God, grab that word, receive it, meditate it, confess it, and I declare and decree there's going to be signs and wonders and miracles following. Expect that river to show up in your life today, not tomorrow, today, okay? Examine yourself and see if you don't have stronger character and expect God to show you the next thing. And when God gives you a vision for the next place he's taking you, then you'll understand why there's been the testing to burn off that old stuff because you can't take that with you into the new thing. And so God can bring up the pure gold and the pure silver of your life so that you'll be able to handle the next blessing, the next scenario, the next level he has for you. Okay? Amen and God bless. Now remember, I always put the links to uh, Periscope. If you want to watch this on Periscope because it looks a little bit different on Periscope than it does on Facebook Live. And also watch it on two YouTube. I have a new format that I'm using on YouTube. And so uh, it looks a little bit different there too. So I always put those links right on my Facebook Live page. So check those out as well. Okay, amen, God bless you. And I will see you next Sunday, uh, Lord willing, same time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for the next weekly live prophetic word. And oh yeah, I've got a podcast too. If you wanna subscribe to my podcast, uh, hashtag PDT, Prophet David Taylor, you can find me on Apple iTunes. You can go to my website, and download all my podcasts or subscribe. My website is prophetdavidtaylor.org. Okay? Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you next week. Have a good week. And remember, expect, expect a sign, a wonder, and a miracle to manifest in your life today because you received this word, the word of testing. Amen and amen. Jesus said, Come.